Hi there, this is Charlie and today I'm going to talk about two-factor authentication and I'm going to show you how you can use your Google account to turn uh, two-factor authentication on to protect your Google services, the, the, the things that you use from Google um, in your day-to-day -day life. But before I get on to how we actually go about you turning it on and using it, what I want to talk about is actually what two-factor authentication is. Now this is the, what's on the screen in front of you is an article that I wrote back in 2014. I will link to it in the description below. Uh, but what, what I discussed here is, um, if, if I just scroll to the top of this article in fact, uh, at, at that point in time a number of Apple accounts had been held to ransom um, and they were asking a hundred US dollars or euro uh, to un unlock those accounts. Now, that that to me would be my worst nightmare. Waking up and finding out that one of my accounts had been hacked and locked, and they needed money to get it, and I needed to pay them money to get it back. Not just that I needed to pay them money; it's what they have access to once they have access to my account to lock it. So. Uh, what I did was I wrote this article about you know some best practices that you could take in securing your accounts and I did speak about uh, two-factor authentication here. So let's just go through what two-factor authentication really is. Um, it was explained to me when I was a much, much younger woman in IT security that two-factor authentication is something you know and something you have. So you know your password, you know your username, you have a fingerprint you know um, your PIN code, you have a key that will t um, to turn in, in a lock. So what I mean by that is, uh, we if we're looking at electronics, you know your username and password, so when you come up to a computer that's got uh, some biometric control on it, you enter your username and password, but before the computer will unlock, it's going to, it asks you to uh, identify that you are who you are, say you are by putting your finger on the, on the reader and let it read your fingerprint. Now, it's hard for someone to um, replicate your fingerprint. I'm not going to say it's impossible. It, it doesn't matter how smart our, our, our mouse traps are. Someone will always be, create a smarter mouse. But there are things; these things make it much, much more difficult. So you know your username and password, but before you get into your computer, you have to use the biometrics and put, uh, and have it scan a body part, an eye, a fingerprint. That's something you have. It's not something that someone else can generally get their hands on. Uh, you know your PIN code when you're trying to get through a uh, electronically locked door. But on top of that, you also need a physical key to turn the lock to open the door. Um, you know your username and password, and um, in the case of two-factor authentication, it gives you an extra code that it asks you to enter when, uh, when, 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 when you go through the login process. And that code is generated, it's, it's called a one-time password, it's generated dynamically uh, and it's displayed on a device that you carry. Um, sometimes these little devices are called key fobs, sometimes in my case it's my tablet or my mobile phone, I've got everything hooked to that. So yes, there's a danger that I might lose my phone, um, but, the, but still getting access to my accounts requires them to know all of my details to be able to get into that. So two-factor authentication is something you know and something you have, the two factors of it, something you know and something you have. Once you've got that, that sort of principle sorted out, um, going through this type of thing, uh, it can be a little tedious, but it, can, but it will certainly protect your accounts a lot more than just leaving them open to um, username and passwords because as we've seen in the media lately, uh, and lately uh, we're talking you know, the last two years, the last three years, this article I wrote was back in 2014, um, you know, four years ago, it, usernames and passwords can and do get cracked. Um, I'm not going to say regularly, but they can and do get cracked. Let's have a look at the types of two-factor authentication that you might have. Um, and I'm talking electronically. Uh, an SMS code sent to your phone, 
a phone call that you have to answer uh, and and the code is spoken to you. The e email, um, the code is emailed, sent through to your email. A hardware token device that displays a one-time password, uh, I, I mentioned before, a key fob. Uh, it's you know, a little electronic device. It just has numbers that change every X number of seconds. That's the one-time password. Uh, or a software implement implementation of that hardware token, an application that runs on your device, uh, device meaning in my case, my, my tablet or my phone, in your case, your phone or your tablet, um, that displays a one-time password. I do have to say that it kind of boggles me when one-time passwords are sent through to, my, to an email address. Um, email two-factor authentication is kind of missing the point in my, my opinion, because email accounts um, can and do get hacked. So you, you do need to be a little bit careful. Um, let's have a look at who can support two-factor authentication. And I've just got a small list here. Uh, and th this list um, it has certainly grown in the time that, that I wrote this article. I couldn't actually tell you everyone that uses it now, uh, but so many companies are just, are just moving al along with that, that, uh, this, this type of uh, extra protection on your account. So Google, um, definitely, Google actually has a really good two-factor authentication service that other uh, companies are using. Twitter was using it. Facebook was using it. Dropbox was using it. Microsoft was using it. I can tell you for a fact now that MailChimp also uses it on your account. Um, and would you believe that some of my game providers, the, the, the games that I play uh, where I need an online account to log into to be able to play my game, also support two-factor authentication. Um, to that to that uh, exactly, uh, World of Warcraft, the Bl Blizzard have their own uh, two-factor authentication service that they use. Uh, and you can download an application to your phone. And when you go to log into your Blizzard account, it asks you to uh, enter the one-time password that its application displays on your phone or your, or your, your tablet, your, your electronic device. Uh, and you know, they do that so that people can protect their accounts. Before we go into uh, how we actually turn on two-factor authentication so you can use it, I just want to touch very quickly on physical device security. Um, <laughs> once you've got your application on your phone, your phone kind of becomes like a key. If you lose your phone, you may be handing over the keys to your empire with it. So it is, it is important to be a little careful with it. Um, you can put some physical device security in place. Um, the Stay Smart Online, the Australian Government web website, had some great tips around it, and I've listed some here. Um, enable a password on your phone. Don't rely just on swipe codes, but use a password. Uh, add a PIN code to your SIM card, so if, if your phone allows you to do that, so someone can't just go and um, duplicate your SIM or uh, access your SIM. Um, set your device to automatically loss. Uh, lock, loss, sorry. Set your device to automatically lock after a period of time. Uh, so if you're not using it, it will automatically just lock the screen down. And when you go to use it again, yes, you have to enter your password. But I think that's far better um, than <laughs> having someone being able to access my phone when I'm not around. Of course, this saves embarrassing butt dials as well. Uh, that, that to me is pretty cru crucial. Uh, encrypt your data. I'm not sure whether your, all devices will let you do this, but if your devices allow you to encrypt the data on your phone, please do so. Uh, make sure you turn your Wi-Fi and your Bluetooth off if you're not using it. Uh, they are vectors for um, accessing devices, and if you don't need them, don't, don't use them. Turn off your automatic Bluetooth discovery so your phone can't be found when you're in public. A lot of devices, when you turn on Bluetooth, uh, your Bluetooth service on your phone or your tablet, it will automatically broadcast out who your, what your device is. Turn that off. If you're trying to connect to someone else via Bluetooth, you can then turn it on and let them find you and then turn it off again. But if, you don't, if you're not using it, turn it off. Uh, check out the lost phone type options provided by your carrier and um, phone manufacturer. Um, so, you know, that'll allow you to turn your phone off. It will allow you to try and locate your phone using the GPRS it, or satellite services. It will allow you to wipe your phone if, if it's truly lost and it will just take all the data off of your phone. 
and worse and, and please remember back up whatever is on your phone and there are backup services for, for phones a lot of the um, providers are providing them now uh, as standard with with their with their bloatware um, have a look and see what you need to do to make sure your phone is backed up and your data is backed up so that if you do happen to lose your phone or it is compromised you can go grab yourself a new one and just restore it okay so that's what two-factor authentication is and just some some guidelines around who supports it and some things you need to consider once you start turning these things on and start using these services um, what I'm going to do I'm going to go to my Gmail account here um, so I go in via Gmail rather than trying to remember links or find the way in. I go in via my Gmail account. Once I'm into my Gmail account, I want to get into my Google account. So on the top right-hand corner, uh, you'll see that you know, you've got your Google account icon here because I don't have anything specific. I've just got a little C that says it's me. If I click on that, uh, you get the button that says go to your Google account. Click on that. That takes you to your Google account settings. Um, now, remember what I said, this is across your entire Google account. Once you turn two-factor authentication on, um, anytime you log into that account, within reason, it will ask you for your, uh, your one-time password that's set up with, with your authenticator. There is a lot of information on this screen. Uh, the ones that we want, though, is under sign-in and security. It's the left-hand block. Uh, presented to you and take the first option in that list signing into Google click on that so we have a few things here it tells you when you last changed your password um, that's actually quite useful if you've forgotten what your password is and you um, look at when you set it it might actually prompt you as to what you were using at that point in time uh, or if you're concerned someone else has been into your account you can actually have a look and see when that password got changed uh, two, but what we want is two-step verification so I call it two-factor verification uh, authentication they call it two-step verification there's two steps to the verification process username and password and then the one-time password uh, we want to change that from off to on so we're going to click on that, that block there. It gives you uh, the information. Protect your account with two-step verification. You can click more to learn. You can click to learn more about it. Uh, you need to add an extra layer of security and it keeps the bad guys out. Click on the get started button. So I'm turning two-step verification on for this account. It's going to ask me to log in again. That's fine. So I'm going to enter my password. And you'll see that, I hope I've typed that correctly. Yeah, there we go. It's logged me in. And it didn't ask me for, um, sorry, it didn't ask me to enter a one-time password because I don't have it set up. Uh, so it says use my phone as a second sign-up. All devices signed into your Google account will get prompts. You can control which phones, uh, get your two-step verification. In this case, in this case that's my tablet that I use you can choose a couple of other options um, and I'm just going to click on that so you can see you can use a small physical device remember what I said about a key fob um, a, a specific device that um, you, allows you to log in and log out of your account or using a text message or voice call I, I really prefer not to use those um, I, I like my authenticator to do so I'm going to click on try it now so what that's done, um, and I don't have an ability to screencast my screen, so what I'm going to do, I am just going to take a screenshot of what's on my tablet so that I can put it up on this video and you can see it. Uh, and then I'm going to say, yes, I can see that I'm in there. Uh, and it's asking me, to put in another phone, uh, put in my backup phone number just in case. Now, definitely put in um, a backup phone number. In this case, I'm going to use my daughter's phone um, just in case I lose my phone. I can have it sent to her phone. But you might want to use a colleague, you might want to use your spouse or your partner, whatever works for you. I'm just going to put that in though. So what that's done is that sent a text message uh, to the phone number that I've uh, entered. 
I need to contact her and get her to verify that. And while I'm waiting on that, I'm going to show you the other way that you can set up backup for um, your device. So um, let's assume that you don't want to use the phone option. Uh, we can go to use another backup option. And I'm going to blank all these out, of course. What this will do is this will give you a list of backup codes that you can print out, and download and print out, um, put them in your wallet, so that if you don't have your authenticator uh, and you need to, um, or if you don't have your phone and you need to get into your account, you've got a, a series of 10, yeah, 10 numbers that you can enter um, as backup codes. So I'm going to click on next so that I can move this forward. Yes, I have my backup codes. Okay, so I've set, I'm, I've set it up now and it's asking me uh, if I want to turn uh, two-step two verification on. And say yes, turn it on please. Okay, so I've now turned on two-step um, verification on my Google account. Uh, it's telling me that I've chosen to use my 10 single-use codes uh, as my backup options and it's telling me the date that I've installed it and turned it on for this particular account. Um, I'm going to go down here. We're going to set up a second alternative set. Now this is one that I actually recommend you do. You go through and uh, select the Authenticator app. Um, and it's free and you can use it on your Android or um, iPhones. I'm going to click on the setup button. It says what type of um, get codes for the, from the authenticator app. What kind of phone do you have? Or Android or uh, iPhone? I'm an Android girl from way back. <laughs> it doesn't really matter Android or iPhone. It works just the same. Click on next. Uh, now I'm going to have to um, do some screenshots around this, but you see it's given us what we call a QR code uh, on the screen. I need to open my Authenticator app, which I will do while I'm talking to you. And I will take screenshots of all of this so that you can see it as uh, I do this video. I'm going to add a new account and say scan a barcode and then I'm going to hold it up to my screen and it's automatically scanned it in and it's added it to the bottom of my list here and I'll say next now that I've got it added and the last thing it asks you to do is confirm that you've actually got it installed on your authenticator app on your phone um, and I enter in the, the six digit code that it's given me and it's telling me now that I, I've, I've authenticated my account and I've confirmed that that's my account and that I've got it installed on my authenticator and the last thing I'm going to do um, it says give me a Google prompt it's not actually turned turned that on uh, it's saying give me Google prompts for all my phones so if I automatically add a new phone to my account I'll get a Google I'll get the prompt on all of my phones not just the tab that I've got linked up at the moment sometimes I run a phone and a tablet uh, and I have them linked to my account so you know just just for convenience getting the prompt on either my phone or my tablet depends on what I have at hand makes makes a difference so that's how you turn two-factor authentication or two-step verification on on your Google account now what that will do I'm going to do something very bad it's going to sign me out of all of my Google accounts okay so now I'm trying to log back into my uh, Google account and hopefully it's going to prompt me for my two-factor authentication yes it has so the first thing it's done here uh, as I've logged in because it's the first time I've logged in with um, since I've turned on two-factor authentication it's asking me to just tap the yes button on the Google notification that's sent to my screen I've tapped yes on my phone and as you can see that's automatically just logged me into my account so it's confirmed that you know I have my phone in my hand and that this is who I say I am it's a good way of doing things so that's how you turn it on on your Google account. In another video, I'll go through how you uh, actually turn two-factor authentication on to um, other accounts as well, uh, like, your Google, like, your, like your MailChimp. 
and your Twitter and your Facebook accounts, just so you've got some uh, backup there and, and extra protection. It's all worthwhile doing. Have a good day, guys.